to Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> In a moment, I'm going to have Pastor Joey come up and share a few things with you. But I want to start with uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to pick up in the eighth verse. So therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended in the lower parts of the earth, he who descended is also one who ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what reason? Come on, let's say it. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ or the building up of the body of Christ, building up of the church. Till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I really particularly enjoy verse 14 where he says that we should no longer be children. How many of y'all know it's time to grow up sometimes? Always, amen. That we no longer be children. What is the, the sign of a child? Tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. They believe anything. Amen. And there's a good side, there's a positive thing about children, the, the childlike faith and so on and so forth. But uh, if you're not real v well grounded in the Word of God, the truth, then you could you know, swallow any old false doctrine, false teaching. Amen? And so we no longer uh, be tossed around and, uh, to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But that... Uh, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, even Christ. Hallelujah. Well, the thing I wanted to point out in particular here is verse 11 where he says he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Well, we've been talking about starting or taking the pause button off of our school of ministry, as you know, for a number of years that we ran a Faith Life School of Ministry, Face Them. And um, we just know that it is time now to do a restart. And of course, we've changed the name, dramatically changed the name from Faith Alive School of Ministry to Faith Life School of Ministry. Pretty big change. What do you think? <laughs> Amen. It's kind of a tongue twister because I'm so used to calling it Faith Alive School of Ministry. But uh, we'll get used to it. Faith, say it, Faith, faith. Life, life School of Ministry. And how many of y'all know that God's called us to the life of faith? The Bible says that the righteous of the just shall what? Live by faith. And if you're going to live by something, you're going to live by it, then you better find out everything you can find out about whatever it is that you have to live by. Amen? The Bible says, for by grace we are saved, what? Through faith, I saw something posted on Facebook yesterday, I loved it, and I shared it on my wall, and it was, grace is God's grip on you, faith is your grip on him, his grip is stronger and better, amen? But we still need faith, don't we? And that's part of the commission that we have as a ministry. I'm a graduate of Rainbow Bible Training Center. And that school started because God had given G, uh, Brother Hagen a vision to start up a school of, uh, uh, that, that taught faith and emphasized faith. God had told him, go teach my people faith. As you know, his story, that, his message has impacted the world and the whole body of Christ. And uh, he came to a place where he said, Lord, I can't get this job done. It's too big for me. And there's not enough people out there teaching your people faith. And then God spoke to me. He says, I want you to raise up a, a Bible training center 
and raise up other women, men and women of God to go teach my people faith. I went to that Bible college, therefore I received by spiritual heritage that mandate. I'm one of those other people to go teach my people faith. And that's why we put a strong emphasis on faith here because that is a mandate that we have inherited and I'm going to obey and do it, amen? But we also have put a great emphasis because the Spirit of God has led us in this direction on grace because we're saved by grace through what? Through faith. And so there's a real strong mixture. Say mixture. How many of y'all know there's a right mixture and a wrong mixture? Some people try to mix law and grace. That's the wrong mixture and it doesn't mix. But I'll tell you what does mix really good, grace and faith. Now that's the right mixture. So if we're going to preach mixture, it's going to be a mixture of grace and faith. Are you with me? So we had a strong emphasis on that in our school ministry. And so having said all that, I'm going to have Pastor Joey come up. He's the school administrator of Faith Life School of Ministry. Give him a welcome as he comes and shares today. Good morning. How are all you beautiful people today? Good to see you. Amen. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, that it's just dovetailing on what Pastor Dave said about the school of ministry and the reason why we do what we do, the school is really part of our DNA and who we are as a church. If you know anything about DNA, and I don't know a lot, so don't start, you know, scientists quote or correct me after the service, you know, not right now. But uh, I do know that DNA is unique to every individual. It's even more unique than your fingerprint. Um, it's, it identifies who you are, your whole makeup. God put that in you to make you who you are, not just physically, but your mind and the way it works. All those things work together. Just like the school is something that's really born out of our church. Um, if you go to the next slide there. Pastor Dave, I think you mentioned it, if you didn't, in the, in the first service, about the vision that God originally gave him for our church that was really from Jesus himself. This is something God gave our ministry that identifies what we do and who we are. We know who we are in Christ, but the works that we do and everything that we do in him is related to this vision in some way. So when God gave Pastor Dave the vision uh, for our church, part of it was to raise up a discipleship training center or a school of ministry. And that was in, was that 99, Pastor, I believe, 99, 2000, somewhere around there. And so the school didn't materialize until about six years later. You know, vision is progressive. Sometimes it takes time. But once it did, we knew that it was something that was born directly out of that, and it was a God thing. Because there's good ideas. Amen. There are good ideas that people have, but when it's a God idea, it's something that's going to produce lasting fruit. And so that's one of the things we really get excited about when we think about the school of ministry is that it has produced lasting fruit. It has done some great things, and it's going to continue to do that. Um, we have someone that's going to come up and share just a little bit, one of our graduates, and you'll be hearing from other people maybe in the next few weeks up until school starts that just want to share their heart and what the school has done for them. Amen? So next slide. Uh, our foundational principles, and this ties into really everything we even do as a ministry, are four tenets that the school is based on. Now, I want to preface this by saying, if you got a brochure this morning, we are very aware that there's typos in the brochure. <laughs> I own that. That is my fault. And there's a, like eight or nine of them, and, and it, I won't get into the story of what happened, but the computer crashed, blah, blah, blah. And we are aware of it, but I'll welcome your input if you see something. As a matter of fact, somebody caught one that I didn't this morning. But um, anyway, thank you for your grace and mercy towards me. Praise the Lord. So you don't, if you don't want to, or please don't, give those out. We're going to have some more next week that will be the adjusted one. So, But we wanted to put something in your hands today, so thank you for your grace on that. But in saying that, one of the things that, that we really focus strongly on in the school is character. How many of you know you, you can do a lot of things in ministry, but it mean, and even in your personal life, but it really doesn't mean much if you're not a person of character? And that's one of the things I think in the body of Christ that we get the finger shaked at is sometimes when it comes to people's character because the world doesn't understand that someone can still operate in the ministry and do things and be used by God, but still not be a person of character. It doesn't disqualify them, but it sure carries weight when you have both. Amen. So that is a foundational principle of our school that we want to walk in character and be people of God who walk in integrity, honor, loyalty, all those things we put a big premium on. 
And I can guarantee you, knowing these men and women of God that are teaching this school and the staff at this church, these are people that live honorably. They live separated lives. They, they live what they preach. We're figuring it out just like you. There's, you know, I mean, we are anointed to do all things in Christ, amen? But we, we have to exercise our faith just like you do, amen? We have to make right choices just like you do. But that character is a, is a very foundational thing in this school that we're going to teach you to live with honor, to live as a, a man and woman of God who's separated and who, who walks in excellence. One of the things is excellence. That's why I mentioned the brochure. We may not do it as good as someone else. But we are going to do what we do to the absolute best of our ability and beyond because God is anointing on top of that does great things. Amen. So excellence is a big part of this. It's just who we are as a church. You've heard this said many times. You know, one of the things that we really believe as a ministry is that you don't have to be a big church to do big things. Amen. Come on. Somebody can amen me. It's okay. But you don't. You don't have to be a big church to do big things. All you have to do is be obedient because when God says speak, just like if he told you, you know, you really should be in this school. In that one word, I'm preaching Pastor Dave's sermons now. In that one word is every bit of provision that you need to do what God called you to do. So whether it's the finances or, or the time or whatever, God provides that so that you can fulfill what he called you to do. And that's why we ask you, if you would just do one simple thing when it comes to the school. Lord, do you want me in that school? I believe he's going to say yes. <laughs> We'd love to see everybody. But, you know, we understand, too, it's a timing thing. Maybe the timing's not right right now. But just ask the Lord, Father, do you want me in this school? It's something that I'm willing to do if this is where you want me. And in that, if he says yes, comes everything that you need to graduate at the end of the year. Amen? So we ask you to do that. Wisdom. You know, wisdom is not knowledge. It's two different things. You'll get a lot of Bible knowledge, and there's a lot of people who walk around with a head full of knowledge but they really can't apply it themselves. They don't have the wisdom to really walk out what they've learned. And so we want to teach you to be a wise person too. And that's not saying that there's not already wise people in here. You don't walk in wisdom in your life, but this is something, again, it's just a foundational principle. We want to help you to apply the, the knowledge that we give you as well. And the last one is passion. Amen. We need passionate people. Passionate people are going to change the world and it's going to start on their jobs. It's going to start in their families. See, the, the mistake we make sometimes when it comes to, and I know Pastor uh, or Dean Randy and Pastor Dave uh, both touch on this, ministry is more than just what you see up here on a Sunday morning. Every one of you, if you're a believer, are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every one of you on your jobs, in your families, all of you are called to the ministry. And that's why this is a school of ministry. It's to help train you and equip you so that you can go out and do great exploits for the kingdom of God. Amen. And that's what this school will do for you. I sincerely, 100% with every fiber of my being, believe that, that we, could, we can put this Bible school on par with any Bible school in the country when it comes to the quality of the teaching and what you get from this pulpit, amen, and from your instructors. Now, again, someone may be better than us, but nobody can do it better than we can for our church and what God has assigned us to do right here at this ministry, amen. And we put time and energy and, and prayer and anointing into this, and it's going to be something that uh, you don't really get on a Sunday morning, some of you say, well, you know, I mean, I get stuff here and I'm a person of faith. It's true, but listen, you can't just do an expository teaching on a Sunday morning because the reality is everyone here is on different levels spiritually. And that's a good thing. That's what you want as a church. There's all kinds of different levels you're on in here. But in a Bible school setting, we can take that word and break it down. And it's a, I can tell you this in teaching it, it's a completely different anointing than standing up here teaching on a Sunday morning. It's completely different. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done in ministry. I love our school of ministry and what happens. So we just encourage you to pray about it. Ask God about what he would have you do. But we got a few pictures. We can go through these kind of quickly of some of our students in the past. Hey, there was Tish. I saw Tish. But there's some, yeah, there she is. There's some graduates in there. And um, I just want to ask if there's anybody in here, if you did, if you graduated from the school of ministry, stand up. We want to see who you are. Amen. Come on. Look at these guys. God bless you. We got a little bit of history, you know. Amen. Our wonderful, wonderful people of God. We even had a famous valedictorian, and her name was Miss Rose Rivera. 
She's, I don't think she's here this morning, but, you know, she was one of our valedictorians. She's so sweet. She was an awesome woman of God, and she's one of our graduates, too. So who's the school ministry for? Number one, it's for those who want to grow in their biblical knowledge. You are going to gain knowledge. You're going to gain things that's going to help you in your walk with God and your ministry. Number two, it's for those who want to grow in their ministry first to the Lord and to other people your family, your coworkers, your church, here at Faith Alive, serving in the ministry to be more effective. We've got people who you'll hear from uh, that graduated that are serving right here at Faith Alive and doing so with excellence. And the third one is those who recognize that they need help in reaching their divine destiny. How many of you believe, without a doubt, you know that God has called you to do something for him? It doesn't matter what it is. It can be anything. Amen. I mean, almost unanimous in here, everyone. How many of you have arrived there? I don't even think I've arrived yet. Amen. I'm still figuring that out too. So we know that when it comes to reaching our destiny and the things that God spoke to us, that we need to do everything we can to get to that place so we can just say, look what the Lord has done. Amen. All right. I want to uh, introduce, you can go ahead and go to the next slide there, my brother. I had to put his face up there. You know, uh, <laughs> the Hicks, Hickses we've been friends with actually for a very long time, but God sent them to us. Uh, it's been a while now. And uh, again, you know, you don't want to build somebody up too much, but, but uh, Dean Randy uh, comes with a lot of experience when it comes to even Bible school. He's been a, a dean at a school of ministry in California, a very effective uh, one and, and that did great exploits for the kingdom. Uh, they've pastored for many years. They've been missionary evangelists. They've done works uh, just all over the world. And father in the faith, maybe grandfather in a few cases. Well, I didn't want to say that out loud, but I guess I did. But, you know, they're just, they're, they're wonderful people. And, and for them to, to be so loving and walk in such humility, but done such great things, we recognize when God sends us people that are gifts to the body of Christ. And don't take that lightly because, uh, you know, again, you don't have to do a big, be a big church to do big things, but it just seems like God sends us big things sometimes. And we really feel that. I know he wouldn't say it about himself, but I can say it. And I, you know, now he's going to have to get up and live up to it. I know, but we love the Hickses. And I want to, I want you to hear from our good friend, Dean Randy Hicks. Come on up, my brother. Well, you know, you you do a lot of things, but uh, you never really write the script. God just kind of opens the door here, and you go through that. And I've told people I would never have written the script for my life, but here I am. I want to read you a scripture. Actually, uh, Pastor Dave didn't read this one this time. It's in uh, Ephesians 4, and uh, it's actually verse uh, 7. It says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. The word Christ actually means the anointed or the anointing, and every believer has been anointed with a gift. Now, we, I, I call that your motivational gift, because out of that gift comes your motivation to do things and basically your motivation for life. And also, what some people don't understand is out of that gift comes a lot of your criticism. Because you'll notice things out of your gift that are either there or not there. If you're a teacher like myself, I notice teaching. I, I, I will look at teaching and, and think about you know, how good it is or how maybe I would do it differently. But it's easy to go from there into criticism because your, your gift kind of you know, illuminates things that may be missing. If you're a worshiper, you'll notice uh, the worship or you'll notice the lack of it. If you're a hospitality person, you'll notice the, the hospitality ministries or the, or the lack thereof. And so out of that gifting, every person has that, and God has anointed you with a gift. Now, Augustine coined the word vocation because a person is, is not just doesn't have an occupation, but you have a vocation. And the word vocation comes from the, uh, actually has a, the base word vocal. It's how does your life speak? And so you take the gift that God has given to you, and then you go into the world and you speak into the world. You should leave an impact. Joey spoke this morning about the 12 apostles that later in Acts it says, these men have turned the world upside down. 
Every believer should have a footprint left in the earth. Amen? God didn't call you to the body of Christ and to the kingdom of God to go unnoticed. You're a city set on a hill. You're a light in, in a dark world. You can't be a city and not be noticed. You can't be a light and not be realized. Amen. And out of, out of your life comes the glory of God as you reach your pinnacle or, or a position of success, then you give that glory to God. I'm reminded of when the Indianapolis Colts won the Super Bowl and the owner stood up on the platform. He said, there's a lot of glory to go around here, but I want to first give the glory to God. Amen. And so you take the glory of your success, the glory of the impact you've made, and then you just give it to the Lord. It's not yours to, to take, it's His to receive. Does that make sense? So the school, is, oh, I'm excited about the school because it's for the equipping of the saints so that you can do that ministry gift that God has given you and other gifts that God will impart as you go along. It's not just a five-fold ministry gift, but it's a gift that may be serving in, in the bank. It may be serving in the construction area, somewhere that people are being impacted by your life. It's not just the pulpit ministry, but it, it is a ministry just as sure as a person's preaching behind the pulpit. Come on. Tell me if you agree. Don't leave me out here hanging. So that ministry is to be equipped. Second Timothy 2.15 says, study, in the King James, it says, study to show yourself approved a workman that need not be reproved, rightly dividing the word of truth. And in the New King James, it says, be diligent to prove yourself. And that's what school ministry is about, is learning how to rightly divide the word of truth. It's going to be based in the word of God. It's going to be based in things that, as Joey said, you can't teach all of it on a Sunday morning because we're going to go into the nuts and bolts of subjects and get down into the real nitty-gritty. You're going to come out knowing things that you, you should know and realizing things that you may already know. Amen. Does that make sense? So uh, we'll be out to answer questions about all the things. Uh, the classes are, I'm excited about meeting with the teachers, and, and we're going to get this thing off of pause. Amen. And launched. One of the things we want to do too, and and uh, Pastor Dave alluded to it, that we the name Faith Life is more generic because we really want to reach beyond the walls. We believe that this church is not the church; it's a part of the church in the body of Christ in Reno, and we want to minister to the whole body and build the whole kingdom. Amen. And there's people that can be benefited and will be benefited by the school of ministry, even from other churches. And we're going to invite them in and say, we just want to impart, we want to teach, we want to equip, and then send you back into that ministry, send you back into, the, into, into wherever your vocation is. Amen. So at this time, and, and I think I said it earlier, we're going to have students come up and share a testimony from now until school starts, which, by the way, is August the 29th. That's the first night of school. We follow the Washoe County schedule pretty much. So if you have children, you know when they're going to be off. Uh, we very, uh, uh, we're not, don't follow it exactly, but it's pretty close to it. And uh, we'll talk about all that. We'll have calendars available once we get our classes nailed down. But um, Richard, why don't you go ahead and come? And Heather, you can come if you like and give them a big hand. Amen. <laughs> Richard and Heather are products of our Bible school. Actually, when we pushed pause, Heather had just finished her first year. Richard's a graduate, and uh, they've got a wonderful work going on in, in Portola, California. Uh, Richard is ordained through our ministry, Pastor Richard and Heather, and uh, they both are, actually. And um, they've got uh, about 200 to 250 kids they're ministering to and adults on a regular basis in a town of about 2,500 or so. Under 2,000, so that's pretty good, man. But anyway, Richard, share with us your heart about the school. Uh, first of all, thank you guys. Uh, and we can't say it enough that um, now that everybody said everything we were going to say, you need to go. That's pretty much it. No, no. let me tell you what. The fire of God is so important to just get involved in it. 
Uh, the first thing, and I said it at first, first uh, service, and I really mean it passionately. We go through hard times every day in our life. Every day there's multiple things we're going through that's just so overwhelming and hard. And I can't think of anything that made us as a couple stronger than when I was coming into to school. And we went separate different times. I went the first two years, and then she started the third year. But when we were going through this, I'd come through these doors and I know it was the Holy Spirit, but man, every single buddy that went to this class just carried it with them. And I know they went through hard times, but you didn't feel that. You walked through the doors, Holy Spirit hit you, and you're like, ah, oh, man, I'm home. And uh, we've always called this home. This is my home for, and Heather's since day one of giving our life to the Lord. But we left for a little while because we were called out of town. And uh, but, so when we had the opportunity to go back to school, uh, stepping into this building, the Holy Spirit just anointed us, gave us an excitement, allowed us to get back out in the battlefield and deal with life's challenges. And so it was really good for us because we get, I'd get the fire, I'd come home, and I'd say, man, God did this, God did that, and it was so cool and this, and he answered that. And it felt like we were just on a big ride at Disneyland, you know, just an exciting thing. So every week, you know, two or three days of the week, whatever days we were going outside of church service, uh, we were fired up and fueled. And so I know you guys know how hard it is, but when you get to come home and feel the anointing and you step back out, you feel invincible, you know? And I mean, we, got, we started our business. We started a business. You poured every single penny that we had to keep that thing afloat. And it was hard in a small area. And we struggled. And many times we'd come in and, and talk to the dean or, or finances and say, hey, we couldn't make our payment, or hey, we can only do this. They worked with us so much because they believed in it so much. And I can honestly say, if it wasn't for those little things like that, we wouldn't be where we're at today. And we know it's all because of the Holy Spirit and God. But just stepping out in that little bit of faith and saying, you know what, I need to be filled up and, and uh, know what God called us to do. And, and through the school, I think the, the biggest word that we learned in everything is, is our love for God because of our faith, you know? And so we all have faith, but when you go through this ministry, you learn so much uh, that you won't get on any Sunday. I'm sorry. You probably won't get it in a Bible study because these people spend so much time in the Word, so much time in prayer, that when you step in there, it's almost like they didn't have to speak. You got it. it was, and I know that's the anointing, and so it was so good for us. I want to read you Colossians 3. Uh, 15 and 16, because really that's, that's where we were at and God called us on it. It says, bearing, yeah, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has complained against one another, that is not what I meant to say. <laughs> Shoot. Ah. Yeah, welcome to the ministry. Yeah, put on spot. <laughs> that's horrible. Well, Father God, thank you anyways. <laughs> that's bad. Anyways. You, you're eating this up right now. You're eating it up. You're like, yeah, see, he can step up and make it look real good, right? Nah. Hey, the biggest thing is, is it's teaching us about our faith, okay? Like I said, we're stepping out. Giving our faith just to come to, to service is always a challenge. Is that not right? You guys agree it's a challenge to come to church sometimes? To go to school and add that to your plate? Come on now, really? Can we handle that? Listen, it's how many, how many months is this? Nine months of one or two days or maybe three days a week, okay? A couple hours. But when you leave here, it doesn't go void, right? The word says nothing goes void when it comes to him. Heather and I never had an idea that we were going to step out into the battlefield in a park, <laughs> in a park, and preach his love to so many young kids that want you just to be real with them. Just be real with them. Beside the river. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, 
half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to me. It's holy.